Okay, for number 20, we're gonna verify his Rawls theorem for this. And let's write this down. So let's write that the endpoint f of three. Let me get my pen out first. f of three. And what's that equal to? Nine. The bottom's gonna be 36 minus 27, which can be nine divided by nine, which is one. I'm also gonna do f of nine. What's that gonna be? 81. Let's see, 12 times nine, that's 90 and 18, so 108 minus 27. So what do you get there? 81 over 81, which is one. So certainly I wanted that to be the case. And what I have over here is um, a continuous function. Let me just write down what I have over here. The points are gonna be three comma one, and the other point is gonna be, um, let's see, nine comma one. Now, certainly, there's a line through there, a secant line, and the slope of that secant line is gonna be zero. And what they're claiming is I'll be able to find some c along the path between three, so c is gonna be between three and nine, such that the derivative's gonna be zero. Let's write that down. So I'm gonna write down f prime of x. I'm going to square the bottom. Bring the bottom to the top. Times the derivative of the top, which is 2x, minus the top, times the derivative of the bottom, which is 12. All right, now I have to find a c. And again, the c is going to be contained. It's going to be between um, <coughs> 3 and 9, such that f prime of c will be equal to 0. Let's see if we can do that. And to do that, I, I really, bottom line is like, I just have to figure out where this thing, by the way, the function continues between three and nine. Um, uh, the reason being is the only place to become done, let me write that down for you. 12x equals 27, like a division by zero. What do you get there? 27 twelfths. And what's that gonna be? That goes in two times, two points some, sometimes. It's certainly not the interval between three and one. So let, let's look at it. So the only thing I have to worry about is when does the top become zero? So I'm going to write it down. So the top, this is the top over here. When does it become zero? Well, it's going to be 24x squared. I'm just simplifying the top, by the way. Uh, this is f prime. Let me put the 12x minus 27 on the bottom again. And then you get, uh, let's see, minus 54x. And then minus 12x squared. Let me keep going through it. And you get 12x squared minus 54x over 12x minus 27 squared. Now certainly I'm looking at this thing, when is it equal to zero? What c value makes it zero? Let me write this down. f prime of c equals zero. That's what I'm looking for. So it's gonna be 12 c squared minus 54 c over 12 c minus 27 quantity squared is equal to zero. Again, I'm not worried about where the bottom is zero because it's not in that interval. So I'm really left off with 12c squared minus 54c equals zero. Well, I gotta solve that. So you get the c comes out and um, you get 12c. I could actually figure out more, figure, factor out more than uh, c, but I'm just gonna do c. Minus 54 equals zero. And let's take a look. And I'm wondering what C is. So C could be zero. Unfortunately, C equals zero is not an interval. So C is not zero. I know that much. The other case over here, I'll write down for you. The C would equal 54 over 12. I do want to reduce that, by the way. And we're going to reduce that slowly. I'll divide by two. So this is going to be 27 over six. And now I'm going to divide by three. Three goes into 27 nine times. Go to six two times. Nine halves is 4.5. Is that on an interval? It's certainly on the interval. So what they asked me to do, find the C, I found the C, and I verified the conditions of Rawls' theorem. So let's take a look at it, see how we're doing. I wrote this down over here, I wrote this over here. Um, I put the derivative down, I evaluate the derivative um, at C, and then I solve for C, and we got C equals 9 halves, all right? Let's go to B, and B says something different now. So on the interval between minus nine and minus three, I had to verify Rawls' theorem. 
So, you know, not that I want to go through all the detail again, but you realize you have to do f of minus 9, it equals a number, and f of minus 3 equals a number. And I, I can't verify Ross theorem, and the reason for that is that these two numbers are not equal. So Ross theorem does not apply here. Thank you.